visiting communities, visit as many as you conveniently can in a row, on an itinerary, on a schedule, or weekend trips, however you can do it. Because every time you visit a community, you get more information about these are things I really like, these are things I don't think I'd want. You have to become informed. Read books about communities. Watch videos about communities. The FIC has two excellent videos by Jeff Kozeny about communities. So wonderful education right on your computer screen. Um, visit communities. Some communities have uh, programs, like Twin Oaks has a three-week visitor program where you can learn a lot. Many communities have visitor experience week, something like that. Community experience week where you can go and immerse, sort of like a total immersion learning. Visit communities you don't necessarily want to join. They're not your kind of community. They don't have the right what you want. They're in the wrong part of the country or they have a different kind of financial arrangement, but you're still learning. So then, when you go to visit the communities that you're interested in, you need to be a good guest. So bring your work gloves. I recommend leather work gloves. Um, bring a really good attitude. Don't bring illegal substances or your dog your ferret, your cat, your rat, or your pet tarantula, or your ant farm. Don't bring those. And um, be prepared to win in Rome, do as the Romans do. Follow their agreements. If they say, don't burn candles after 3 p.m., <laughs> for some reason, don't do it. <laughs> Follow their rules. When you want to ask questions about the community, ask, is this a good time to ask? Here, I'll model this visitor behavior. Is this a good time to ask you a question about the community? Oh, that's so thoughtful, that's so respectful. And the person might say, oh, not right now. As you can see, I'm feeding my child and getting ready to go to work. But the person might say, how about after dinner tonight? I'll meet you in the lounge. Or how about, the person might say, well, it's not a good time for me, but we're going to have a visitor orientation later today. And Susie here will help you. In other words, be respectful of the fact that you're in people's homes and they might be busy. Um, getting in somebody's face, kind of a lot, and saying, why don't you have more vegetarian food, is not conducive to them thinking well of you. So it's a good idea to be really, really respectful of people's time. Also to consider the whole entire property their home. The parking lot, the trails, where you walk, everywhere is their home. Follow their rules, follow their agreements, treat it respectfully. You probably know this already, of course, but some people have to be reminded. Okay. Um, visiting communities, what to ask. You have to find out stuff. Either they'll have an orientation or they'll hand out you a handout packet or they'll have a tour and they'll explain it. But then there's things you want to know. Maybe they didn't cover it. Who owns the land? How do you make decisions? Uh, what are the goals of the community? What is the mission and purpose? Uh, what are your hopes for the community? Um, what are some of the things you love most about living here? When you know them well enough and you've established some rapport and you and they feel good about each other. What are some of the challenges of living here? What are some of the conflicts that you've been dealing with and did you resolve them and how did you resolve them? What's the turnover like here? Are people um, leaving and going? And th The last folks that left, um, what was their reason for leaving? Oh, this is getting a little personal, right? When you know them well enough. Um, how do families fare here if you have children? Uh, talk to parents if you have children. How, how is it here with kids? Do you like living here? Do your kids like living here? Um, what is their dog policy? Because might, you might want to bring your best friend, Rover, and they might have a policy that Rover would be unhappy with or that you and Rover would be unhappy with. So you need to find out things like that. What does it cost to join? Of course. Uh, are there annual dues and fees or quarterly or monthly or how does that work? Are there work requirements? What kind of requirements are they? Are there? And so on. You need to ask questions, but of course in that sort of patient and friendly goodwill way where you ask, is this a good time to ask? So then you need to assess the communities that you have visited that you like. How do you assess them? Is it a match in values and lifestyle? Is it a match in vibes? Do I and they generally like each other? Is it, is it, does it have a mission and purpose that's what mine is? Please, I beg of you, don't join a community 
where you like the architecture or the landscape or the people, but you don't like their mission and purpose. But when I join, I'll just try to get them to change it. <laughs> no, don't do that, please. <laughs> this can result in all kinds of horrible conflict. Do not mess with their minds when you're joining a community. Really do support and understand and go for and want to do their mission and purpose or else please don't join. You can always be their friends and visit. You don't have to give them up. Just don't join them if they're doing something in their mission and purpose that's not what you want to do because then you'll be at cross purposes when it comes to making shared decisions about resources of money, time, and labor. You don't want to be at cross purposes with your new community. Uh, then let's say you found your community and you want to join them. How do you do that? Well, I would suggest that you uh, follow the rules impeccably as to what they want from new members. If they want you to do this many hours of labor, do it uncomplainingly and cheerfully. If they say we need you to have mediations with members, if you and they don't get along, go do it. If there's somebody that you think doesn't like you too much or you don't like them too much, make an effort to go meet with them at a convenient time and talk about it with them. It's incumbent upon you to straighten that out if you need to. Um, I suggest the same kind of qualities that I suggest for what makes a good community member. Um, please have an attitude of how can I help, how can I contribute, work gloves, remember, work gloves. Please don't be so certain that these fools need to be straightened out and that you have a 12-point program for how you can straighten them out in the first few months of your being there. Keep that one to yourself for a while till you get to know them better. A little humility. I, I suggest humility. And um, willingness to pitch in. Assertiveness, which is not the opposite of humility. We had some folks come to Earth Haven when we, couldn't, we didn't have our minutes of past meetings all in one place. And the woman who was a brand new provisional member, she wasn't a full member yet, she said, let me go find all the minutes and put them together in notebooks by year and make an index by topic and by date. And she did. And the community vastly benefited within, it took her a couple of months to do this. As soon as she'd done it, the whole community was better off having an organized system of what they had already decided. And uh, that was a brand new person. Various new members have won our hearts by what they've done. One new member whose name is Golden here at Earth Haven came in and immediately began doing the most onerous tasks and learning all kinds of research and then working with uh, things having to do with water quality and sanitation. And we joked when she joined that she'd already fulfilled her lifetime labor requirements for the community before she'd ever joined because she did so much good things for us. The quiet member who follows the rules and pitches in and helps is like gold. It doesn't have to be a ra-da-da-da-da, fabulous, here, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this member who offers lots of new and amazing things. Just somebody who's quiet, patient, and does it is, is also really, really valuable. Um, I like to jokingly suggest that the person enter the community like a wolf enters a wolf pack, meaning that they don't um, rush in howling and snarling and growling and telling those other wolves what they ought to do different. The way a wolf enters the wolf pack, as I understand it, is that they let the other wolves sniff them and hear them in the neighborhood of the wolves for a while before they crawl in with their ears saying in earth body, in wolf body language, hello, I just like to play, and then they flip over on their back and expose their vulnerable neck and belly to the other wolves who come around and ritually growl and snarl over that wolf. And basically, they're saying in wolf language, the one that's entering the wolf pack there with their neck out is saying, hello, I know I have no status here, and y'all are the alpha and beta and delta <laughs> wolves, and I'm at the bottom of the pecking order of the pack, and I don't know anything yet, and I'm new, and I'm, you know, and the other wolves are, are reinforcing this by snarling and growling in a wolf body language. They're saying, you don't know anything. You're brand new. You've got to follow the rules. Don't rock the boat. Just, you know, kind of don't mess around with us. We're the boss. And after they've done with this ritual growling and groveling, <laughs> they get up and play. And then after a while, that new wolf is, um, integrated into the wolf pack. Well, this is an exaggeration, and we're not wolves. However, it does help to enter with an air of, I'd be so happy to learn how you do things before I suggest doing them differently. I'd be so happy to help you in every way you need before I um, 
organize a whole complete new project that takes labor away from the projects you already have. Let me first learn your culture before I try to change it. That's really what I'm asking for new, new people in a community.